Welcome to ECE302. This is Lecture 5 on 8 on Random Vectors. I'm Professor Stanley Chen. Today we're going to look into the generalization of a pair of random variables to n-dimensional vectors. This is a very important extension because most of the data that we encounter today are high-dimensional data. So let me start by reviewing a slide that we studied a long time ago when we first talked about joint distribution. Recall that if we have a single random variable, then the PDF is specified by this function fx with a single variable x. In the beginning of this chapter, we talk about a pair of random variables. So we have x1 and x2. And we know that a joint distribution can be defined by this two-dimensional function in x1 and x2. Now, imagine that you have three random variables, x1, 2, and 3. Then the distribution can be specified by this three-dimensional function. This is not too much different from a two-dimensional distribution, where you just incre increase one ex extra dimension. So as you go to even higher dimensions, let's say you have n random variables and you want to look at the joint distribution, then it will be specified by this n-dimensional function. So you ask, what is the meaning of this n-dimensional function? This n-dimensional function tells you what is the probability for you to get this sequence of values, x1 through xn, where the likelihood or the probability of getting these are specified by uh, this function f. So you can imagine that uh, you have a high dimensional space and then uh, you ask what is the probability of getting this specific coordinate of x1, uh, x2 and of course if you go to high dimension you will have x1, 2 all the way through xn. You ask what is the probability of getting this particular sequence of numbers. And this is really the beginning of random vector because I can always say that this sequence of uh, random variables, I can call it a, a vector. So I say x and then I have uh, x1 through xn. That is a random vector. And then how about these uh, states? I can say that I have a, a vector of states and then I have x1 through uh, xn. So these are the states and this is the random variable. And if I put them together, you have a random vector. So uh, the random vectors, they are extremely common in practice. This is again a slide that we discussed uh, some time ago when we introduced the joint distribution. Imagine that you have a data set that contains many, many images. Each image, if you rearrange the order of the pixels, you can you can represent the image using a long column vector, uh, where n will specify the number of pixels. Now, if you have color, you just um, multiply n by three times, so you have three n of elements. What is the probability distribution for this uh, image? Well, there exists a high-dimensional manifold which is given by this uh, high-dimensional PDF. And then you go to this, this PDF, you say, here it is an image of, uh, of grass. And this is very likely to happen uh, in the image because many images will contain grass. Uh, compared to an image that contains a very special type of uh, animal, which may not be as uh, common. And so the probability of getting this uh, image of grass Will have a higher value. And so what is this small x? This small x would mean uh, this uh, image that contains all these pixel values. Uh, if you're talking about grass, they are, they are mostly green in, uh, in the color pixel values. Uh, so, so this is your input x and you ask what is the probability? The probability is the number that returns by this uh, probability distribution. So this is very common. And uh, the reason why we want to learn about this manifold is that we want to make uh, decisions. 
we want to say uh, uh, if I have uh, this set of pixel values measured, what is the uh, probability that it belongs to uh, class A versus class B? So that will become very useful when we do classification. So how do we understand random vectors? As I mentioned, random vectors, they are really the concatenation of n random variables. They may or may not be independent. Okay, uh, now uh, this vector small x, they denote the state. It is a n-dimensional state vector where uh, this vector means uh, there is a coordinate. Okay, so there's a coordinate. Uh, it's an n-dimensional uh, coordinate. This n-dimensional coordinate it says that if this is my space uh, and then here is a point, uh, this point will be specified by this coordinate x1, x2, x1, xn. Of course, we cannot draw a coordinate more than a three dimension, so you need to have some imaginations when I draw this picture. It really means that a coordinate in a high dimensional space. Uh, so, uh, uh, what is this? This is really the height of uh, this coordinate. Now, uh, when we talk about probability distribution function, we also know that the probability uh, density uh, needs to be integrated in order to get you a probability, and therefore you usually put a small uh, a neighborhood around that and then you integrate the area uh, of, of this uh, service uh, within uh, this neighborhood so that will return you the probability uh, if it is a continuous random variable and then you you only look at the um, this specific quantity here then you talk about the probability and then we have measure zero uh, and therefore we need to integrate now the integration is not too complicated uh, it, uh, you can you can say that I have a random variable x. Uh, this is a vector of random variables. Now it is living in a set A. This set A, of course, is the, it is a set in a high dimensional space. For example, uh, it will be uh, this orange uh, region that you call it uh, to be uh, A. And then you say, what is the probability that I, I can draw random vectors that are living in this uh, orange set? Uh, then you need to integrate over all the possible uh, elements of uh, x uh, in this uh, set A. Now, uh, this is of course a vector integration, and we know from calculus uh, that is uh, equivalent to doing this um, uh, uh, nth order uh, integration, where you have x1 through xn as your integration variable. This is certainly a very, very difficult integration, and we don't expect you to uh, to carry out the computation by yourself, normally this computation is done by a computer. But what can we say about this uh, integration? Well, this integration will tell you the probability that this random vector x that is living inside this set uh, A. So independence would kick in when you have a random vector, uh, and this is a very important uh, I intervention because without independence, you really need to do this um, multidimensional integration, and that is very, very difficult. So how can independence help? Independence of um, the random variables really means that this joint PDF can be written as uh, the product of n uh, PDFs. Uh, so what it means is that if you're trying to integrate this uh, uh, x inside the set A, which is uh, according to our definition, it is this n-dimensional integration. Thus, uh, if we know that all these random variables they are independent, uh, it will become uh, all these integrations, and then you have f x one of x one, and then f x two uh, x two, and so on, and then you have d x one d x two, and and so on. Now, uh, look at. Let's look at this integration. This is the innermost integration that takes care of the x1, x2, and so on. But when you're trying to integrate with respect to x1, all these x2 to xn uh, do not really matter because you're integrating with respect to x1 only. And therefore, this can be written as uh, the integration of fx1 of x1 dx1 
and then your fx2 can come out okay uh, and, and so and so when you try to do this integration you just need to look at one coordinate at a time now what is the difference between this calculation and the calculation over here if you do not have independence then you need to integrate this high dimensional function through x1 over everyone uh, together here you're just integrating x1 only and what happens to the x2 and x3 as you can see uh, this entire integration can now be written as integration of fx1 of x1 uh, dx1 uh, times uh, integration fx2 uh, x2 dx2 and times the last one which is the integration of fxn uh, small xn and then dxn so this is a lot easier because it, it all boils down to computing these individual integrations. And for example, here I'm assuming that uh, we have a uh, n element vector, and then they're all zero mean unit variance Gaussian random variables. And then I'm defining the set A to be uh, minus one, two uh, to the power n. So this is really meaning uh, a, a, a box uh, from minus one to two, but it's a high dimensional box. So how do we do this calculation? Well, the, when you do this calculation, uh, you just need to integrate this Gaussian random variable, which according to our definition is zero mean unit variance Gaussian for this variable x1, and then it's going from uh, minus one to two. And you do this calculation again for x2, it's also from minus one to two, uh, uh, and that's true for everyone. And note that this x1 and x2, this x1, this x2, they're just dummy variables for your integration, and they don't really matter. Uh, and so, and so this boils down to just taking this integration from minus one to two. Uh, just look at x1 because they're all the same. So you can take the power in, and then you calculate the inner uh, uh, integration. And that is just the CDF uh, of at two minus uh, CDF at minus one for the Gaussian. And so we know that uh, independence can immediately help us to solve this high dimensional integration to a very simple uh, 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 integration and then we take the product. So I want to introduce two specific uh, statistics of a random vector. One is called the mean vector, the other one is the, called the covariance matrix. The mean vector of a uh, random vector is defined as this uh, vector mu. Mu is now a vector. Uh, so mu is uh, in, in R uh, n, where n is the number of elements in the vector. So this notation says that I'm going to take the expectation on each individual random uh, elements, uh, and then I'm going to put them into a vector. So how do I calculate this uh, expectation? Well, uh, the, the expectation is really defined as, uh, uh, so you are looking at expectation of x1. That is, according to our definition, it is x1 times your f of x1 uh, with, with x1 inside and you take the integration. This is the marginal PDF of, um, of the joint distribution. And so, um, and so you go to the last one, this is uh, f, xn, uh, that will give you the expectation of xn. Now you may ask, um, I only have this joint distribution, right? So f x1, x2 uh, through xn, and then I have a small x1 through a small xn. This is my joint distribution. Uh, how can I calculate uh, uh, this, which is the marginal uh, PDF, so that I can compute the, uh, the expectation. Uh, note that this, the, the translation from the joints to the marginal is really done by the integration over all the other elements. So fx1 of x1 is the integration of your fx1, x2 uh, through xn, and then x1 through xn. And then what would be the thing that you want to integrate? You want to integrate uh, dx2, dx3, dot 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 through dxn without your 1, okay? 
So you basically take care of everyone except x1. So take care of everyone except x1. And you integrate uh, over the entire sample space for your x2 through xn. So if you integrate that, then according to the definition, you will be able to get the, uh, the marginal uh, density. And that, this is how we calculate the expectation of x. Now certainly if you have independent random variables, uh, all the elements are in the random vector, they're independent, uh, that will be very easy. You just need to calculate uh, uh, one of those because if they're independent, uh, then, uh, then your, um, uh, this integration would become fx1 of x1 and the integration of x2, uh, x2 and so on and then you have fxn, uh, xn and so now if you try to integrate uh, over over the entire sample space for uh, x2, uh, you just need to take care of this and then that will give you 1 and then you, you integrate uh, over, over omega 3, this is the sample space for x3 you just integrate that and uh, that will also give you 1 until the last one that will also give you uh, just 1 uh, as a result uh, you can just knock everyone out except for uh, x1 so that would give you the uh, expectation uh, for um, that will give you the marginal distribution when you're trying to calculate the expectation so let me give you an example uh, here is a uh, random vector of uh, n elements and then the nth element is it, is it is a Poisson random variable with a mean of lambda n. And so if I want to calculate the expectation of x, uh, I just need to calculate the expectation of each individual uh, Poisson. And I know how to calculate the expectation of each individual Poisson. And that is, uh, that, that is the lambda that goes with the Poisson. And so you can see that the expectation of x is actually quite intuitive. Uh, Everyone has its own mean value, every element has its own mean value, and so just take the mean value of each individual and then you put them into a vector. That would be your uh, result. Now, let me define another very useful terminology. This is called the covariance matrix. The covariance matrix of a random vector is defined as this notation, cove of um, x. In this random, uh, in this covariance matrix, the diagonal elements they are the variance of uh, these n random elements, which are random variables. The of the diagonal elements they are the covariance between uh, x i and x j. So what is covariance? Covariance, if you recall the definition, is really x one um, times uh, x two uh, minus mu1, mu2. This is the definition of a covariance. And so if you really want to be a, a more uh, consistent notation, you can also say it like covariance of x1, x2, uh, x1 and x1, uh, covariance of x2 uh, and x1, and so on. So uh, you can write this variance as covariance of x1 and x1. So this covariance matrix is really the exhaustive uh, enumeration of all the possible pairs of random variables and we calculate their um, uh, covariance. Now if you have independent uh, elements in your, in your random vector, then we know what will happen. If they are independent, then the covariance will go to zero, right? So the covariance will all be gone, then you will have a diagonal um, then you will have a diagonal uh, matrix. Uh, but if in general when you have a random vector uh, which contains n elements, they are not necessarily independent. Then in this case, the covariance will actually provide you very, very useful information of how one variable is uh, correlated with another variable. So one example would be a speech file. So when you have this uh, speech signal, and we know that uh, if you have a, a signal here, and it has to be correlated to a, an adjacent uh, a value. And so uh, this covariance will tell you that uh, if I have a measurement that is given by this number, there will be high probability that my uh, the other value would be, would be somewhere here. 
instead of uh, a, a arbitrary number. And so the covariance matrix will help you to uh, identify what kind of speech files that you're looking at. For example, uh, if you pay, play in a very special uh, instrument, uh, then you may have a specific waveform, and then it has certain uh, a time correlation between uh, one note and another note. Versus if you are looking at human speech, then perhaps the duration would be shorter or longer, um, and the covariance matrix will also become different. And therefore, the covariance will actually carry a lot of very meaningful information uh, for you to do things. Uh, the covariance matrix is, of course, defined in this uh, matrix form. It has uh, m by n elements. Uh, this can also be defined as the expectation of this thing. This is the uh, random vector x uh, minus the random uh, mean mu which is defined as it previously, and then you have this x minus mu, and you take the transpose. Now, x minus mu is a column vector, and then x minus mu transpose, it is a, uh, it is a row vector. And so when you take this product, this is called the outer product of two vectors, that will give you a matrix. So the dimension of this covariance matrix, it is really uh, in uh, for the rows, and in uh, for the columns, and so you have an n by n covariance matrix. And then now to take the expectation, what you would do is that uh, you take the average. So you ask in practice, how am I going to uh, compute the covariance matrix? Well, in practice, uh, let's say you are doing in Python or you're doing things in MATLAB, uh, then you can have a random um, vector, which is the, uh, let's say you have the cave. A vector in your data set. You first uh, compute the mean vector and then uh, you, you, you do this calculation uh, by taking the transpose. That will give you a matrix and then you sum over all the possible uh, training samples going from 1 to k and then you divide by 1 over k. That, this is an estimate uh, of your covariance matrix uh, and I put a hat over here to denote that this is really the uh, estimate. Now, uh, for the mean vector, we can actually do the same thing. Uh, so the mean vector is just 1 over k, uh, sum over all the xk. Uh, this is a vector, so k goes from 1 to capital K. Uh, and so now if you try to estimate covariance, you can also put an estimated uh, mean vector. In computer today, uh, you don't have to do a very complicated um, uh, and summations and so on. Uh, in MATLAB, you can just type mean of a, a, uh, a set of vectors, and then you, you can also type covariance of a set of vectors. Uh, there are similar commands in Python that you can do the same thing. So talking about independence, uh, I would like to mention that if all the coordinates x1 to xn, they are independent, then we know that this covariance of xi and xj, uh, it will become zero. It becomes zero because uh, if they're independent, then an expectation of xi, uh, xj, uh, will equal to expectation of uh, xi uh, and expectation of, of xj. Uh, and therefore, the covariance, which is the difference between uh, this joint expectation minus the uh, product of the expectations, that will give you zero. If that happens, uh, you will have a diagonal uh, matrix. Uh, this is a very easy case, and if it happens, uh, uh, you can simplify the problem uh, significantly. There is uh, a, a very uh, related term, which is called the co correlation matrix. Uh, the correlation matrix is defined as the uh, expectation, it is defined as the joint expectation between uh, xi and xj. Uh, the difference between this r and also the sigma is uh, is the is, is the is the mean vector. So sigma is defined as an expectation of uh, x i um, x j um, uh, x i uh, x uh, minus mu and then x minus mu uh, transpose. So these are all vectors, um, and there are this matrix is defined as expectation of uh, x and the x and the transpose. Uh, 
Now you can see that the difference is the presence of this mean vector. And so the uh, covariance matrix can be think of as a uh, centralized uh, moment, whereas the correlation matrix is, is the uncentralized version. Uh, they carry similar meanings. So I want to give you a very concrete example of uh, this join vector, um, uh, random vectors. And the example I'm going to give you is this multivariate Gaussian, and it turns out to be the most useful uh, distributions in high-dimensional space. So uh, let's consider a d-dimensional uh, random vector. And so your random vector x is given by x1, x2, all the way to xd. So D designs uh, the designates the, the dimensionality of your random of your random vector x. The notation for this uh, C, uh, PDF of a joint Gaussian is given by this thing. So you have uh, let's look at the exponential. You have this x minus mu uh, transpose. Uh, so that will give you what? So this thing will give you a row vector. Uh, because you have a transpose here, x minus mu. And then uh, you also have a uh, sigma inverse. This is your covariance matrix. And then here you will have x minus mu, that is a column vector. So when you do this in a product, uh, what you will get, a, it will give you a scalar. It will give you a number. And this thing should not be any surprise to you because uh, what if uh, you go back to one dimensional case? So if d really equals to one, uh, then your sigma inverse will go back to uh, sigma uh, uh, sigma square um, minus two. Okay, it's not minus one because uh, each element here, this element itself is already the variance of x. So uh, and so if you only have d equals to one then your covariance matrix will go back to a scalar, but that's uh, 1 over the, uh, the variance. And then what happens to here? This, is, uh, this becomes a scalar, which is the x minus the mean. And so when you express this out, it will become uh, 1 over 2 sigma square of x minus mu uh, sigma square. Uh, that is the expression that you would normally have when you have d equals to 1. When you have d equals to 2 or higher, uh, then this is the general expression where you have the mean and then you have this covariance matrix that will scale uh, each dimension differently. And then you have the other uh, column vector to complete this inner product. The, the thing in the beginning, this is a normalization constant. Uh, now if d equals to 1, uh, just ignore it, uh, then you will have this uh, 2 pi and then you have a square root. And it, it, if d is 1, then you have this uh, sigma square. Uh, now, this notation means uh, the determinant determinant of, of the matrix, and we know how to calculate the determinant of the matrix. Uh, so uh, if you put in a d equals to 1 here, which is a sigma square, then uh, this determinant will just return you a sigma square. Uh, so uh, now if d is not 1, d is high dimension, then uh, you will need to take care of uh, this uh, determinant because the determinant sort of uh, gives you the area or the volume of, uh, of all the, uh, of the of this uh, uh, integration. So this is notation for the joint Gaussian and this, uh, uh, and this expression, it turns out to be extremely useful. So I would encourage you to try to remember this uh, form. Uh, it may be difficult in the beginning, but it will become very, very useful uh, when you try to do uh, more difficult problems. Um, I want to give you some uh, preview of what we are going to discuss in the following lectures. Um, uh, in the following lectures, we are going to talk about the shape of the Gaussian uh, random variable, random vector in high dimensional space. And this is a preview. It tells you that if I choose uh, mu and sigma for different choices of uh, mean vector and also covariance matrices, I will indeed get a different Gaussian uh, uh, distribution. In this case, uh, here you have a uh, mean being uh, 0 and 2, and therefore your x is 0, this is your 0, and then your, the other variable is 2, so you have 2. So, so, it is, so this Gaussian is centered at 0, 2. 
and then what? And then your, your first coordinate is, it has a uh, variance of 5. And so now you measure this variance. The variance along the x-axis, you have 5. So you have more fluctuations. And then this is 0.5. So the variance along the vertical axis is much smaller. So this will tell you that if you try to draw samples from this Gaussian distribution, uh, the shape would be like this. It has to be something like a horizontal ellipse. And then the center of the ellipse is given by this 0, 2 coordinate. And then the radius of the ellipse uh, is specified by this 5 and 0.5. Now, uh, consider another example where I shift the center to 1 and 2. And so in this case, the center is 1 and 2. That is the center of the Gaussian. And then this one is a little bit more strange uh, because you have 1 and 1 on the diagonal, but you have minus 0.5 and minus 0.5 on the off the diagonal. Now, at this point, we are not able to analyze uh, these because we need a tool called the eigenvalue decomposition to analyze the orientation and also the radius. But this sort of tells you that uh, along one dimension, uh, you have certain certain variance. Along the other dimension, you have uh, certain variance. Uh, these can be found if you try to do the eigen decomposition on this 2 by 2 matrix. And you will show that uh, uh, in one dimension, uh, the eigenvalue is higher. The other dimension, the eigenvalue is smaller. This is a more extreme case where you have uh, 2 and 2 on the off diagonal and 1.9 and 1.9 on the uh, off the diagonal. And in this case, you can see that the Gaussian it is uh, is a heavily uh, 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 skewed uh, in, in, in certain certain orientation angle. And then it is a very uh, uh, long ellipse uh, with angle maybe, uh, I don't know the, exactly what is the angle, okay? But there's an angle here. Uh, the center of this ellipse is at uh, 0, 0, as specified by this uh, mean uh, location. Okay, so you ask how, how can how can this ever tell you uh, the uh, the elongation of this ellipse? Uh, this is again done by the eigen decomposition. If you do the eigen decomposition of this two by two matrix, you can see that along one direction you have a very very strong value, the other the other direction you have a very small value. So these we will discuss uh, in the next lecture. So to summarize, for this lecture, we introduced the idea of random vector. It is a very, very useful uh, concept when you try to deal with uh, high dimensional data. Uh, the two things that I want to emphasize in this lecture is the mean vector, which is the vector of all the individual expectations, and also the covariance. The covariance is given by this matrix. And then uh, you can use the mean vector and also the covariance matrix to divide a high dimensional Gaussian and the shape of the Gaussian is fully uh, 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 determined by the mean vector, which is which would define the the center of the Gaussian, and then the uh, orientation and also the the length of the radius of your ellipse is specified by this covariance matrix. So this is the end of this lecture. I hope you have learned something new. Uh, the uh, we are going to continue on. Uh, this discussion of random vectors and uh, I hope that you uh, you can try uh, some problems uh, in, especially in, in the MATLAB and also the Python exercises to make sure that you know how to do this on computer because on computer uh, on modern data science uh, more, almost all the problems that you encounter will be in high dimensional space and so being able to program uh, uh, your Python or MATLAB uh, and then and handle the data, uh, it will become very, very useful uh, down, in, uh, down the road in your career. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, send me an email. I'll be very happy to help you. Thank you very much.